actually. And uh, you can tell that by the light. And maybe you can also tell that by this tree that is outside my hostel. It's quite a special tree because for some reason it became a favorite roosting spot for hundreds of birds. They're a bit quiet this morning, but I think you can hear them. Every evening around sunset, all these birds, hundreds of them, flock to this tree and they make a huge noise as they get settled in for the night. And in the morning when they wake up, you also get uh, quite a quite a pleasant bird noise right here in the middle of a Kuala Lumpur. I don't need a reason to be awake this early. I'm uh, what you call a morning person. I don't do well at night at all. I run out of steam pretty early. But in the morning, my eyes pop open and uh, this is my favorite time of the day. I get a lot done in the morning. And when you're traveling, it's always a good idea to, you know, even occasionally get up really early and go out onto the streets, especially in Asia, because the streets are completely different and you stumble across all kinds of interesting things. If you followed a normal routine of, you know, waking up, having breakfast, going out at 10, that kind of thing, you'd miss all kinds of stuff. So at least a couple of times on your trip, you've got to get up uh, really early, head out at uh, 5.30 or 6, uh, and uh, see what's going on out on the streets, especially in the parks. Funny thing is, with these modern digital cameras, the sensors are so powerful and they gather so much light that uh, it probably doesn't even look early morning to you in the video. It's quite dark around me right now, but I think in the camera, as far as the camera is concerned, it's still quite bright. You could probably see uh, a lot around me. And I do have a reason for being up uh, this early this morning. Not a big reason or anything like that. I'm not going far away on a big trip. But someone told me about an alleyway near here that in the morning from between 7 to 9, turns into a big street side flea market like what we have in Canada called uh, garage sales and I love things like that I love rummaging around uh, junk shops and uh, flea markets so I thought I'd go check it out and uh, see what's going on could be interesting I'm not sure why the flea market takes place here or why it starts so early and ends so early I'm guessing, of course, that it has to do with permits. I'm guessing that nobody has a permit. And the fact that they're allowed to set up at the side of the alleyway and sell things is just a matter of custom. They've been doing it for so long that they just keep doing it. And I don't think it's an official you know, market or anything like that. So they set up early, get out early, and yeah, nobody worries about them. Only uh, people like me uh, come take a look around looking for bargains or just looking for uh, yeah, just a chance to rummage. Right, check this out. You can get yourself a kettle, hair dryer, stereo system, shoes, rope, garden hose, all kinds of household items here. Oh, looks like he's already uh, packing up. He was selling clothing here. Success. I don't think there's any doubt that I found the uh, flea market alleyway. Check this out. It looks way more popular than I expected. So, I'm gonna head down the alley and uh, see what's for sale today. Yeah, this is all pure garage sale material. kind of random item you might want or need.
yourself a movie. Phone booth. It's a long forgotten uh, DVD. adapter or a cable, if you lost yours or it's broken, this is the place to come. You can probably find one here. And old family photographs. If you're traveling, backpacking around, and your shoes are worn out, this is the place to come. If you're on a low budget, of course, get yourself a used pair of shoes in pretty good condition. I assume the prices are good. Sunglasses, fancy belts. Of course, I'm always the most interested in uh, electronics and camera gear, computers. It's amazing how many times in my life I'm actually looking for something like this, you know, cables. I'm always in need of some adapter or cable that nobody sells and nobody knows anything about. And uh, if, I, if I knew about this place, I could have just come here. Every charger and adapter you could think of is uh, hidden inside this pile. Hobbyists. I guess this is a good place for hobbyists too. Coin collecting, stamp collecting. There's a neat little book. Coins from every country, and I noticed the uh, Canadian flag here. A uh, old Canadian penny. Yeah, old coins. That's a cool little collection. If you uh, had a niece or nephew interested in this kind of thing, this would be a perfect little gift. Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos. I spoke to the young guy selling the coins, and he said that collection of coins in the booklet was from 60 different countries, and he was asking uh, 70 ringgit for it. And as a collection like that, considering its condition, I don't know anything about coins, but that seems like a pretty good deal, really, if you're looking for a present for someone. I was told you could get a lot of good deals here because some of the items are what they call, they, that they fell off the truck, you know, a euphemism for they were stolen, something like that. I don't know if that's true or not, but when you see a display of like seven or eight brand new smartphones with no packaging and no adapters, no chargers, it's a pretty good chance that uh, they were stolen, but who knows? And uh, you can't have a flea market without some vinyl, without some albums. Well, it looks like these might be movies, actually. Widescreen edition of The Land Girls. Don't know what that is. Oh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I'm guessing these are Blu-ray. Back in my day, this was like the the latest and greatest technology available. And now it's uh, in flea markets. Blu-ray. Came and went. Yeah, this is such a great place. Especially if you needed a new remote for your TV, calculator, new watch. You save a lot of money shopping here, I'm sure. Oh, oh. 
interestingly enough, with my uh, Casio watch, the one thing that keeps breaking on it is the strap. The watch keeps running, but I keep having to buy new and new straps for it. And I remember when I was in Singapore, I went to a market exactly like this one, and I picked up a strap just like one of these here. It was the only place I could find it because nobody in watch stores uh, sold it. no flea market is complete without dumbbells which every man buys at some point in their life uses for one week and then puts in the closet and pretends uh, they never bought them <laughs> What an amazing place. You get so many random items. A little stuffed bear or something. Household uh, pots and pans. Leather old shoes, boots and bags. I just didn't bring enough cash. Okay. I'll keep it I'll keep it Bit of jewelry. You need a dictionary. Old uh, movie camera. Yeah, even a chandelier if you need one. With all this stuff here, you probably come across a million things you didn't even know you needed until you see it. And then you think, wow, I need one of those. Look at that. Entire uh, tins of coins. display of uh, perfume for sale. Yeah, perfume. You can taste. <laughs> it's okay. You have to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> Some classic uh, magazines. Skateboard, board without wheels, a Tony Hawk ride. It's probably a classic, I don't know. And of course, a vacuum cleaner. Again, no flea market is complete without at least one vacuum cleaner. And there's the oldest technology of all, actual physical books. And if you needed uh, prescription glasses and reading glasses and you're on a budget, I've seen quite a few on, for sale here. It'd be a good bargain here, probably. This is the watch place to come to. I spend all that, uh, all those hours going to shopping malls looking for a watch. I should have come here. Entire suitcases of watches. Bands. There isn't as much uh, clothing here as I expected. There are some people selling clothes, but shirts here and jeans here. But mostly, well, and there's some more along the wall over there. But maybe it's just not a high vault, high profit item, perhaps. Yeah, 
it's got to be a risk buying a phone secondhand in a place like this, but you never know. You could uh, come across a bargain. Oh, it looks like these are the screens for the phone, so you could repair your own if you wanted to. I did reach the end of the uh, flea market alleyway. I'm heading back uh, to the beginning now. I noticed there was a little side alley heading off in, in this direction, so I'm going to duck down that alley and uh, see what there is to see over there. Looks like some endangered species kind of stuff here. There's my friend from the bird park, the right. Yes, in this one. Rhinoceros hornbill. Ah, uh, hornbill. Borneo come. Mm. Red. Yellow. So what? What is this? The. Uh, what, what do you call this? What kind of stone is it? It's this one. Yeah. 101. Oh, it's from them. Oh, from the horn. Yeah. Oh, I see. This one. Horn, horn. Okay, I see. Wow, I like this. She's got all of her chargers and batteries nicely organized. If I was shopping, this is where I would come. She's like me. She likes to keep things all compartmentalized. It's funny, being here reminds me a little bit of shopping at Lo Yat, because just as at Lo Yat, pretty much the only thing people are worried about here is the price. This is price shopping. I've tried uh, chatting with a couple of people about the products they're selling, where they came from, this sort of thing, but they're not really interested in talking about that. All they tell me is how much it costs because in a place like this, that's really all you're worried about. How much is it? That's the question and the price is the answer. Beyond that, there's really nothing else to talk about. Behind me is the alley, or the short little side alley I was talking about. Looks like it heads out to a more main street. I'm gonna head down there and uh, see what they're uh, selling there. Oh, yeah. This is one entrance into the flea market area. This is the small side alley. Seems to come out onto this street here. And I'm quite familiar with this street. I've walked down it many times, but I didn't know about this uh, flea market taking place down in that little alleyway. And there is the, uh, the Swiss Inn. So that's kind of a good landmark if you look for the Swiss Inn hotel on this street then you're in the right neighborhood. Just look at the uh, Swiss Inn towards the left, and there's the alley that heads into the uh, flea market. And I'll show the uh, entrance of the main alley when I get there. I'm gonna go back in and uh, head back to the beginning again, just to see if there's anything I missed. Oh, so I'm being told that the name of yeah. this is the Pasar Karat, yes. the Pasar Karat yeah. market. Yeah. Okay, what is that? <laughs> okay, what does what does karat mean? Karat means something like this. Ah, the thing not good. Oh, okay, used like second hand. Yeah, all the people people here also karat. Okay, it's a good joke. Karat stuff for. Well, you can find so many things here. I know. So many things you never see, you know. You never imagine, but you can see here. Right. Yeah, you should buy one shoes from us. Yeah, I should. Except I, I don't need them. Just traveling with my backpack. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't have enough room. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, can I have? 
not really. I'm I'm just a tourist. Oh, you're just a tourist. Just Have looking look. around. Uh, me not handsome. <laughs> ah so we got power banks. Yes, power bank. Back scratcher. Yes. But then maybe that is for you. I don't yes, know. Yes, <laughs> you also get yours. Everybody, not only for me. Everybody. Everybody, right? right. Ah. Oh, here it is. Here. Yes, we sell. You can long, you can short, you can use front, you can use at the back. Right. Yeah. Whole body. For Chinese New Year. Yes. Oh, oh and you have some uh, flash drives. Yes, everything me I got. Yeah, I got disco light as so. Here is a disco light. Oh, disco light. <laughs> well, I don't think I need a disco light. Now and now you need it. Now you don't need it. Yeah. Ah. Okay. And now you need it. You think a cup of beer and then uh, on the disco light. <laughs> it's funny, I feel more and more at home the longer I stay here. You know, you've got roller blades, all kinds of things that I would see at a Goodwill store in Canada. And I'm sad to say that I've done a lot of shopping at Goodwill. I've lived a, uh, a budget lifestyle most of my life. So all of this is uh, very familiar to me. I don't know how much of that I caught on video, but a man was explaining to me that this market actually has a name, and it's the Karat, K-A-R-A-T market. You can see the sign there, Pasar Karat, and Karat means used, or maybe it means broken or worn out, something like that. And he was joking that this is a market is also for Karat people. He was uh, called his friend Karat, that he was also worn down and not so valuable anymore. So I guess that's the probably the ongoing joke of this market. Pasar Karat. I'm glad I know the name. The suspicion or the idea with this market is probably that they sell a lot of stolen goods at a cheap price. But from what I've seen here, if there are any stolen goods, it'd be a very small amount. Almost everything here here is uh, old and second-hand. It's really just like a, a second-hand market for personal items, household goods, things like that. I certainly haven't seen any expensive items other than maybe a couple of smartphones, and that's about it. But, but even a cheap smartphone these days looks like a very expensive one, so you just never know quite what you're uh, looking at. One of my uh, favorite things in the whole world is the Planet Money podcast. I'll put a link to it in the description if I uh, think of it. I love this podcast because they talk about economics, but they talk about personal level economics mainly. And I'd love it if, say, the uh, Planet Money team came to a market like this and just did a study of how it works. Because I'm really curious about who all these people are. Um, my informant over there, he said that it is licensed and everyone here has to get a permit from the government or from the governing body that controls it but I don't know how much it costs for a permit do certain areas cost more than others um, how much square footage do they get for their permit what can they do or can't they do and how much money do they make like how is it controlled and, and how the economics work that, that would be a fascinating thing but uh, I'd love to do it myself, but Planet Money people, they're the experts. They should get on it and come down here. It'd be fascinating to do. Here's a real blast from the past. An Olympus film camera from who knows what decade. And I'm filming it with an Olympus digital camera. Check this out. That is one crazy looking beast. A Sony Video High 8 Handycam. Wow. Technology. 
technology has certainly come a long way since then. Imagine a time when this was the latest in technology, you know, the best you could buy. I didn't notice it until just now, but there's another sign right there on the wall. It says, this is Pasar Karat. So it is really an official market. Somehow I thought it was more underground, uh, guerrilla sales. But yeah, it's actually uh, controlled and uh, really well organized. It's great. Love it. I think this is the main entrance to the Pasar Karat flea market. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to find because a really good landmark is the Pasar Seni LRT station, which is right there. So from anywhere in the city, you could ride the uh, MRT, go to Pasar Seni, come out of the station and walk up this street. You pass a 7-Eleven, you go past the main entrance to the Petaling Street Chinatown Market there, and then the next alley up is uh, Pasar Karat. And here you are. The only uh, trick is you have to come here pretty early, I think. You know, 8 o'clock should be fine. I think that's the peak time, 8 a.m. It probably winds down, I think, at about 9 a.m. or shortly thereafter. I think you can see uh, Pasar Carrot uh, Flea Market behind me there. I think that was a very successful little early morning expedition. I really enjoyed that. I'm glad I came. And I think I will end the video here. I hope you enjoyed it. and. Uh, if you ever need some little doodad, some little electronic thingamab job or something, you need a new pair of shoes, good price, some reading glasses because you're getting old, this is a place to come. I'll see you in uh, Pasar Carrot and I'll see you in the next video. The bonus question for the last video was about the original miners who worked near the Gombak and Klang rivers, which led to the founding of the city of Kuala Lumpur. What were those miners mining? Gold? Silver? Diamonds? No, none of those. They were mining for tin. Tin mining is a big part of the history of Malaysia. In 1883, Malaysia was the largest producer of tin in the world, and today, tin mining is still a big part of the Malaysian economy. Bonus question for this video. Why is a flea market called a flea market? Where did that name come from? Put your answer in the comments below answer at the end of the next video. <laughs> well, I don't think I need a disco light. No, and now you need it. No, you don't need it. No. Ah. Okay. And now you need it. Bring a cup of beer and then uh, on the disco light, <laughs> put some music. Then you want it. Travel tip 17 is about business cards. Business cards are kind of old technology. They're old fashioned, aren't they? But they can be really useful especially because they often have addresses and other information written on them in the local language, not just in English. So, for example, when I check into a new hotel, I always scan the front desk to see if they have a stack of business cards. And if they do, I snag one and put it in my wallet. It always comes in handy. You could be out exploring a city later, your phone runs out of power, you don't have Google Maps anymore, and you're lost. How do you get back to your hotel? Simple. You hop in a taxi, show the driver the business card from that hotel, he can read it because it's in the local language, and he takes you home. A business card has uh, saved you a lot of trouble. 
Or weeks later, you're in another country altogether. You're chatting with another traveler and you tell them about this great hotel, this amazing hostel you found in Kuala Lumpur, but you can't remember the name. But wait, you've got the business card for that hotel. You pull it out of your wallet, give it to the other traveler, and you've helped them find a great hotel. I grab business cards not just from hotels, but from every business that I visit. Restaurants, banks, camera stores, everywhere. It might not seem important at the time, but there could be a dozen reasons why, in the future, you might want to go back to that place. And since you have the business card, you can find it easily. So, it's a simple little tip. It's common sense, really. Just make a habit out of snagging business cards when you see them. You don't have to make a big deal out of it or, or think about it all the time. You see one, just grab it. You never know. It could help you out of a jam in the future. They helped me out dozens and dozens of times.